We're quickly coming up on the end of the year. Like November is just a week away. Of course, if you watch this a week from now, it'll be in November. But the point of this video is that the S22 Ultra is almost a year old now, which is crazy. All the phones have come out for the year. We've had the Samsung phones come out. We've had the OnePlus phones come out. We've had the Google phones come out, the iPhones. It's all here now. So now we can kind of look at this from a retrospective perspective and kind of reevaluate the S22 Ultra and look at it and see, is this phone still the king of 2022? Now, we can certainly make the argument, you look at this and you look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I mean, I really think that Samsung brought more to the table with this than Apple brought with that. That's a whole other conversation though. And let me know if you want to see a head-to-head -head comparison, iPhone 14 Pro Max, S22 Ultra, let me know. I may get around to making that. But this guy right here, top-notch phone. And for the longest time this year, I've been saying best phone of the year, best phone of the year. And of course, that's not a hard argument to make, right? It has everything. It came out with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. You've got the stylus. You've got the 108 megapixel camera, 120 hertz refresh rate, quad HD+, plus, super bright screen, 6.8 inch, crazy super AMOLED, two times display, all these great things, ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, 40 megapixel front-facing selfie camera. And I still think, I still think the best selfie camera of this year for sure. But it's a top-notch phone. It's got everything, class, sophistication, premium build, and I've said many times that I think that this is the best, well, of course, if we want to call it the Note, which basically that's what it is. Effectively, what they did was they took the Note 20 Ultra and they kind of refined it and slimmed it down maybe a little bit, and then they called it the S22 Ultra. We all know that the Note got canceled. No more Note. They punted it to the S22. They took over the Ultra spot, and this is what we got. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because it's a fantastic phone. It's got all the power and sophistication you want. You can play all your flagship level games. If you want to talk about a dedicated gaming phone, this is going to compete with it really, really well. It's got lots of power. I mean, heck, right now you can get it pretty cheap over on Samsung. If you basically trade in top of the line phone from last year, like an S21 Ultra, you can effectively get this phone for like 399 bucks with the free 256 gigabyte upgrade. And if you want to get the 512, you can pay an extra 50 bucks. $449, I think is a pretty good deal because it's an MSRP of $1,199. If you're watching this later, the deals have probably changed. This is kind of a close proximity. I'm releasing this video at the end of October. So don't come back in like the middle of March next year and be like, the deals are not the same. They're not going to be. But if you're interested, there's links in the description. You can use that to go get it. So yeah, I like what they did with this phone. I totally love the S Pen on here. And it's funny because I've gotten really spoiled by the larger S Pen of the Fold, but this one, I think it works perfectly fine when you've got this more narrow screen right here. You can do all your work on it. And there's a lot that can be said about this because it's a multitasking powerhouse. You can do everything on here, split screen, you can do your wireless decks, you can do your wired decks, you got the 5,000 milliamp battery, everything you need for top of the line performance in a flagship smartphone. Then the cameras, you got all the great cameras on the back. And this is probably the most developed camera setup out of any phone available this year. 108 megapixel, telephoto, you got the telescopic telephoto, 100 times zoom on here, macro capability for macro lens photography. And you still get the, you get the telephoto, you get the ultra wide, you got everything you could possibly want. And it takes some top notch photos. Still, the heaviest criticism that I have for this phone, of course, is the shutter lag. I will demonstrate it here, right here in this video like the shutter lag as you're tapping it, like it's not an instantaneous feedback, snaps the camera picture just like that. You're gonna want something like an iPhone or a Google Pixel phone. Those are almost instantaneous. This one, it has this notorious lag that I don't know why they can't ever seem to fix. But my general consensus on this phone, yeah, it's probably still the best phone of this year. Then there's other good phones like this guy right here, the Pixel 7 Pro. I love it, fantastic phone. Everything the Pixel 6 Pro should have been last year but they seem to have got it right this year. So $899, $1199. But they've got some fantastic trade-in deals, actually on both of them, pretty good trade-in deals on both. Pixel, Google's trying to get rid of the Pixels and Samsung's always trying to get rid of their S22 Ultra. But this one, I think is the most complete. And then again, if you want the S Pen that goes along with it, if you want that super 40 megapixel selfie camera, if you want all the great things that go along with it. And one thing that's cool, kind of something most people overlook, you can use, the S Pen as a remote shutter. So you can use it, let's say you've got your phone, you're doing stuff, you can press down the button and hold it, 
it'll open up the camera app and then you can just press the little button on the S Pen and it acts as a shutter. Then if you double tap, it flips it around to the other way, the front facing selfie camera, same thing. And then if you double tap, you can flip it back. And then if you press and hold, you get the rapid functionality where it just takes all the pictures really quick. So it's pretty cool, but that's something that's really nice. And then in addition to that, if you go into pro mode, a lot of people don't know this, if you've got a set of earbuds, then you can use that as a wireless lav mic. So if you want to record, you want to step away from it, set up your phone, walk off a little bit of a distance, activate the recording functionality with your S Pen, and then use your earbuds as a lav mic. That's really, really cool. A lot of people don't know about that. It's something you can do, and that's pretty much an exclusive functionality of the S22 Ultra. So that's really nice. Again, you get the 5,000 milliamp battery, you get the full complements of cameras, and you get best in class support. So we're talking five years of security patches, four years of operating system updates. This is something that's even better than what you get with Google. Google makes the Pixel phones, they only give you three years of operating system updates, but they give you five years of security patches. So they're on par with security patches, but you get four years of operating system updates when it comes to this phone or it comes to the Samsung phones in general, the most recent ones. So a lot of stuff going on there. Great pricing, and most people would probably balk at it and say, okay, $1,199 is not great pricing. I think that for what you get, $1,199 is a fair price. However, nobody really pays full price because Samsung, and if you go through your carrier, is always doing all these great deals where you can trade stuff in, you can finance it for three years and get it for super cheap, all sorts of great things. So most people aren't paying $1,199 cash money. If you are, that's fine. Some people can go do that. I tend to trade in my phone from last year. So what happened when I got this one? I traded in my S21 Ultra. I paid like 300 bucks for it. And then I got all the extra freebies and stuff too because they gave me all sorts of extra stuff to go along with it. That's something they do when you can pre-order them. Not so much now, but still you get some pretty good deals. And if you trade in, let's say an S21 Ultra, you can basically get it for 399. I think that's a pretty fair deal, especially when you get other stuff that goes along with it as well. So I still think that this is probably the best Android phone of the year. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, okay, well, what about the Pixel? I think the Pixel 7 Pro is a great phone. I think that it competes in a lot of areas. I still think that this one has a little bit of a leg up. I know people really do depend on the reliability of the Snapdragon processor, at least in the US. Now, I think that probably if you have the option between the Exynos version, <laughs> go Pixel 7 Pro, but here's the thing. Both of them have great camera systems. And it's funny because if you look at DxO, on the DxO mark, they actually awarded a better higher mark for the Pixel, which that happens almost every single year. So you're still getting two top of the line camera systems regardless of which one you go with, but that is a little extra leg up for the Pixel, but also it doesn't do the 100 times zoom and you can't reach out and touch the moon, for instance. I tried taking one of those moon photos and it came out like a blurry orb, which is pretty much to be expected. So you get a little bit extra and that's one of those cool things you can do with this, but you also get the S Pen. And that's kind of the differentiating factor. Like if you were deciding between the Pixel 7 Pro and you were deciding between the S22 Ultra, I would say those are probably the two biggest differences, but also the screen's a little bit brighter and a little bit nicer. Th this is just exudes class and sophistication. Now the Pixel 7 Pro, it went up a huge notch over the Pixel 6 Pro in a lot of different areas, especially in reliability, it feels more premium. So not trying to turn this into a Pixel 7 Pro versus an S22 Ultra kind of video, but it's something worth noting because it's out there and it's also $300 cheaper. There's good trade-in values, but focusing solely on this phone, I think that from a completeness perspective, from completeness perspective, from longevity for support, you get the S Pen, the multitasking, you get DeX, you get wireless DeX. There's still a couple key areas where I think that the S22 Ultra just takes it a little bit further over what you get with the Pixel 7 Pro and a lot of the other phones. I do think that from a normal flagship phone Android perspective, even I think globally, like globally looking at iPhone and looking at Android phones, this right here is probably the phone of the year. Again, it should be, it's 1199, it's very expensive, but I think that they bring more to the table and there's a lot less frustration compared to like, let's say the iPhone 14 Pro set up, the Pro Max, what they did with the iPhone 14, regurgitating last year's chipset and trying to charge more money for basically last year's phone effectively. But the 14 Pro Max, yeah, they did change a few things here and there, got the A16 in it. But overall, I think that Samsung 
did a little bit better with the S22 Ultra across the board with improvements, sophistication, and making a really, really impressive phone. Albeit, yes, $1,199. Very expensive. But again, there's a lot of ways you can maximize your value if you're interested in getting one. This is not a sales video by any stretch of the imagination, but I wanted to take a look at it a year later. Well, almost a year later. Basically 10 months later. It's a top-notch phone, and it's going to be top-notch for a long time. This is going to be a great phone that's going to last you for years and years and years. Gone are the days where you need to get a new phone every year, even every two years. These phones are built to last, and they're supported for five years. And that's really, really hard to say that because Samsung, for the longest time years ago, was not the leader in support, not the leader in software support. But now they keep beating Google almost every month coming out with the updates and stuff like that. So it's really impressive what Samsung has done in the last couple of years turning this around. And yeah, I think this is a top-notch phone. I think if you're interested in it, you'll probably love it. And now that it's almost a year old, you can get accessories cheaper and you can get some great incentives and deals through Samsung, through your carrier, whatever. So that's all I've got. I'm gonna wrap this one up. If you have any questions or comments, then please go down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. But tell me, what do you think? What do you think the best Android phone of the year is? In fact, tell me what you think the best phone of the year is. This one, I think it's held up really well, and it's also not had the same level of issues like the Pixel 6 series had over the last year. And software-wise, I really think they've taken things up to the next level, especially when it comes to support. So that's all I've got. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.